Hello and welcome friends. Basically we are dealing with power system. In power system we have seen that how the electricity is reaches to our home. We have seen the structure of power system and uh, in that also we have seen the different components of the power system where we have seen generation part, distribution part and the transmission part. Uh, in the transmission network we have also discussed about the transmission voltage. So if you have not watched that videos uh, you can find the video links into the description box. So let us start today's video. So yes, in the in today's video, what we are going to do, we will uh, see some summary points uh, that will definitely help you in cracking any examination. So first, if we talk about the transmission network, if we talk about any transmission network, so we know that the aim of the power system is to, you know, to uh, to provide the electricity to the so many consumers and to achieve that we need to uh, do the generation in a very bulk manner right so and if we are doing the generation at that time also we have to make sure that the generation is economical right so if you want to uh, see the first point is uh, our aim should be that if we want to do the economic generation of the large uh, power the, at that time we have to use the large generators right so for economical generation large generating stations are used and secondly these generating stations are not located at the prime location right uh, depending on the prime mover suppose if we are talking about the thermal power plant so thermal power plant would be located where coal could be easily transported from a particular location right so jahan pe coal sabse zyada available hoga us jagah ke aas paas hi kahin pe hum thermal power plant dale to bahut sara hamara jo transportation cost hai wo bach jayega so depending on the particular factors we are deciding the location but main thing that we need to keep in our mind that it will never be on the prime location that means it will never be near to the load centers it is it is definitely going to be on the particular remote areas right so generating stations are located far from the load centers right and and the location depends on the particular availability of the prime movers suppose if we talk about the hydro power plant then wherever the water is available at, at, at that particular location hydro power plant could be located right after that if we if we talk about the third thing basically a transmission network is a grid right and definitely the main thing is to transmit that particular power right to the large areas right so a vast network of transmission has been created so that power generated at generating station may be fed to the grid right so basically we have developed a transmission network so that we the aim is to generate the bulk power and the second thing that we need to keep in our mind that that bulk power should be transmitted to the particular load right so a transmission network has been created so that the power that has been generated at the generating station that could be fed to the grid right and in the transmission network also in the transmission network we have seen that uh, uh, we have seen the structure of the power system at that time we have discussed that transmission network is uh, uh, you know it is uh, in the two part first is primary transmission first is primary transmission it is it is basically at the high voltages and we have seen that uh, how we can choose the particular voltage for transmission purpose right that you can find in the second video and that also you can find over here right by clicking on the i button you can find that particular video right so uh, we have seen that high voltages is preferred for the transmission and even in the uh, in the primary transmission uh, the voltage that are preferred is 132 kilovolt then we have 220 kilovolt then we have 400 kilovolt right so these are the particular voltages that is preferred and rarely we have uh, 765 kV right and in the secondary transmission uh, 33 or 66 or 132 kV are preferred one right so this is about the voltages and uh, last point that we want uh, that I want to talk about for the transmission is generating stations they are interconnected right uh, in the transmission network we have so many generating stations now that generating stations they are interconnected and we will see the different reasons for it right but the thing is this station are interconnected they are interconnected Okay, now uh, we will see that what are the different advantages 
for the interconnection purpose but the thing that you need to understand suppose uh, let me draw it for you suppose we have this generation one right here we have generation two right this particular branches may be interconnected right similarly we can have a g3 here they could have interconnected and they can go to feed the particular load right or they can uh, go to the grid right? right so here we have the interconnection and now we see that why the interconnection is advantageous and what are the different reasons for it there are so many advantages for the interconnection and we will discuss one by one first advantage that we have is the plant capacity is reduced first of all let me write it for you reduced plant reserved capacity okay so this is the first advantage so basically here you need to understand that every plant is having a reserve capacity for it suppose the thing over here is in the power system we don't know that at which time we have what amount of load that is connected okay a load jo hai wo consumer pe depend karta hai and at the certain time we cannot decide that at what particular time how much load we would be having right so plants they are having a reserve capacity so at the time of uh, peak demand they may can use that particular capacity and suppose if you are doing the interconnection at the time what can we do we can particularly use a second plant for that particular purpose theek hai agar maan lo ke koi ek time pe load zyada bad jata hai to hum kya kar sakte hai ke dusre plant se jo hai wo power hum khinch sakte hai to ye karne ka jo ek advantage ye hai ke jo hamari reserve capacity hai wo kam ho sakti hai theek hai to yahan pe hum kam reserve capacity ke sath bhi plant ko operate kar sakte hai so that is the first advantage right after that what we have is increased reliability second advantage that we have is increased reliability now what do you mean by increased reliability because the thing is the thing that we want from our system is that we want continuous power right suppose if one of the generating stations has been disconnected due to some fault at that time another generating station can feed the power to that particular load right and at that certain point of time the power will not be disconnected right and that will give the higher reliability theek hai to usme hamara jo power hai wo continuously hamare load tak feed hota rahega so that is one of the advantage of the interconnection now if we talk about the third advantage so third advantage is increased effective capacity increased effective capacity of the power station jo load duration curve hai usko observe karenge so we may find that load curve of a different interconnected stations are different theek hai अब कोई एक जनरेटिंग स्टेशन है उसकी लोड कव जो है वो डिफरेंट हो सकती है दूसरे के लिए वो डिफरेंट हो सकती है तो इसमें क्या हो सकता है कि जो मैक्सिमम डिमांड है एट अ पर्टिकुलर टाइम दैट विल बी रिड्यूस्ड राइट एंड फॉर दैट इफ यू सी द एफिशिएंसी विल इंक्रीज राइट सो हियर ऑल्सो द डाइवर्सिटी फैक्टर इज डिक्रीज बिकॉज सपोज देर इज अ मैक्सिमम डिमांड दैट कैन बी सेट बाय द अदर प्लांट राइट एंड इफ इफ यू सी द इफेक्टिव कैपेसिटी ऑफ दैट पावर स्टेशन इट विल इंक्रीज राइट so that is the third advantage that we have after that we have fourth advantage that is economic operation now how can we achieve the economic operation now let us talk about a scenario suppose we have a hydroelectric plant and a thermal plant they are interconnected now what can we do is suppose in the summer time we will use our thermal plant as a base plant and we will use hydroelectric plant as a peak plant तो होगा क्या कि मतलब थर्मल में क्या रहेगा कि वाटर की अवेलेबिलिटी है वो कम रहेगी तो उस टाइम पे अगर हम थर्मल पावर प्लांट का ज़्यादा यूज़ करें तो हमारा जो रनिंग कॉस्ट है हाइड्रो इलेक्ट्रिक पावर प्लांट के लिए वो कम है ठीक है तो वो कम हो जाएगा क्योंकि उस टाइम पे वाटर अवेलेबल नहीं है तो उसको रन करने के लिए हमारा जो कॉस्ट है हाइड्रो इलेक्ट्रिक का वो ज़्यादा हो जाएगा लेकिन उसकी जगह पर अगर हम थर्मल पावर प्लांट का ज़्यादा यूज़ करेंगे तो इट विल गिव अस द लेसर कॉस्ट फॉर द पर्टिकुलर टास्क सिमिलरली अगर रेनी सीजन है तो उस टाइम पे हम क्या करेंगे हमारा जो हाइड्रो इलेक्ट्रिक प्लांट है उसको हम ज़्यादा यूज़ करेंगे उसको हम एज अ बेस लोड बेस प्लांट यूज़ करेंगे और जो थर्मल प्लांट है उसको हम एज अ पिक प्लांट यूज़ करेंगे सो एट दैट पॉइंट व्हाट विल हैपन द रनिंग कॉस्ट फॉर द हाइड्रो इलेक्ट्रिक प्लांट विल बी लेसर सो वी विल यूज़ दैट पर्टिकुलर प्लांट एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर काइंड ऑफ ऑपरेशन विल गिव अस द इकोनॉमिक ऑपरेशन फॉर द पावर जनरेशन राइट सो दैट इज द फोर्थ एडवांटेज ऑफ द इंटरकनेक्शन नाउ द फिफ्थ पॉइंट इज वी कैन यूज ओल्डर प्लांट्स देर आर मेनी प्लांट्स अगर कोई एक प्लांट है जो बहुत सारे पहले मैन्युफैक्चर हो गया है 
अब क्या हो रहा है कि उसकी एफिशिएंसी एकदम कम हो चुकी है सो इट इज़ नॉट एबल टू फीड द पर्टिकुलर पीक लॉट्स और अ पर्टिकुलरली एज इट इज़ नॉट एडवाइजेबल टू यूज़ दैट पर्टिकुलर प्लांट एज अ बेस्ट लोड ठीक है तो उस टाइम पर हम क्या कर सकते हैं कि ऐसे जो ओल्डर प्लांट्स है दे आर नॉट केपेबल टू फीड अ पर्टिकुलर लोड बट दे आर डेफिनेटली केपेबल इफ इट इज गेट इंटरकनेक्टेड विद द मॉडर्न पावर प्लांट ठीक है अगर मॉडर्न पावर प्लांट के साथ उसको इंटरकनेक्ट कर देंगे तो दे कैन फीड अ पर्टिकुलर लोड राइट फॉर अ पर्टिकुलर टाइम पीरियड राइट सो एट दैट टाइम वट कैन वी डू सपोज इफ वी हैव अ पीक डिमांड so at that time we can use this uh, older plants to feed the peak load right so that is one of the advantage sixth advantage that we have is we can extend peak loads okay depending on the load curve it may happen that uh, apart from the load curve we may have the peak load so at that time we can you know use the different plants that are interconnected agar koi ek time pe agar peak demand bad jati hai to at the same time we can use the particular different plant to share that load theek hai to us time pe agar sharing jo hai peak load ka hum kar sakte hai so that is also one of the big advantage that we have for the interconnection after that reduced capital cost right with the interconnection generation of the larger size jo bhi generator jo larger size ke hai they can be employed and the results in reducing the capital cost per kilowatt right agar hum interconnection large generator ka karenge to us time pe kya ho jayega ki hamara jo capital cost hai per kilowatt it will get definitely reduced right so that is the seventh advantage and at the end, at the end we have the last advantage that is savings in operating cost now by the interconnection it is very much possible to allocate the total system load to various individual power stations theek hai agar economic or economic operation humko karna hai to what can we definitely do is we can definitely uh, alter or allocate a total system load to the different uh, generating station theek hai maan lo ke ek time pe mera jo uh, load hai wo 1000 megawatt hai aur mere paas ek generating station hai for that is uh, Uh, generating 500 megawatt second is generating 250 third is generating 250 right so depending on that particular load i can divide the load to the different generating station and that also in terms of uh, keeping the economical generation and the transmission right so if we do that the operating cost uh, we will save so much in the operating cost right so these are the eight Uh, advantages of the uh, interconnection of the particular transmission network and uh, definitely if we see in the power system we have so many things that are interconnected and our uh, grids also in uh, as we discussed in the first video of the power system that we have uh, regional grids that are interconnected and they perform and uh, by the interconnection they make a national grid right so we have the interconnection in the uh, in our power system now we discuss the requirement that we have in the transmission line right so we know that from the generating stations theek hai ye generating station jo hai wo ek hamara jo transformer hai wahan se fir humko kya milega maan lo ye three phase transformer rahega three phase theek hai to yahan se hamari jo transmission line hai wo humko jaati rahegi theek hai aur transmission line bhi jo hai yahan pe jo hamara jo towers rahega theek hai wo towers ke hisab se fir wo aage jo hai जाती रहेगी ट्रांसमिशन लाइन ठीक है तो जो ये ट्रांसमिशन लाइन्स है वी हैव ऑल्सो डिस्कस द वोल्टेज इज फॉर द ट्रांसमिशन नेटवर्क एंड नाउ वील डिस्कस द रिक्वायरमेंट दैट वी हैव फॉर द ट्रांसमिशन लाइन फर्स्ट इज द पावर लॉस इज शुड बी मिनिमम राइट पावर लॉस इज शुड बी मिनिमम राइट दैट इज द फर्स्ट रिक्वायरमेंट सेकेंड इज द पावर मस्ट बी डिलीवर्ड एट द स्पेसिफाइड वोल्टेज तो मतलब हमारे यहाँ पे इंडिया पे क्या है कि मतलब अगर थ्री फेज की बात करें देन वी हैव द स्पेसिफाइड वोल्टेज दैट फॉर अवर डोमेस्टिक पर्पज इज 415 फिफ्टीन वोल्ट एंड फॉर सिंगल फेज वी हैव फॉर डोमेस्टिक यूज वी हैव द वोल्टेज दैट इज स्पेसिफाइड एट 230 थर्टी वोल्ट राइट सो दीज आर द रिक्वायरमेंट तो पावर जो भी हम ट्रांसमिट कर रहे हैं सपोज यहाँ पे ट्रांसमिशन नेटवर्क की बात कर रहे हैं तो मान लो कि वन थर्टी टू के वी पे हम ट्रांसमिट कर रहे हैं तो वो थ्रू आउट दैट पर्टिकुलर लाइन वन थर्टी टू के वी शुड बी मेनटेन राइट सो दैट इज द रिक्वायरमेंट then we should not have any radio interference in between the transmission right so no radio interference and finally we should have the high availability so these are the requirements of the transmission lines so this is it for the today's video in we, in this particular video if we if we summarize it we have discussed the things 
summary points for the transmission network after that we have seen the reasons for the interconnection and at the end we have seen the requirements for the what is the requirements of the transmission lines are having right and in the coming video we will discuss uh, the pattern of the distribution system in the distribution system we will see that what is feeder what is service mains and what is distributors what is the difference between them so if you have not subscribed the channel please subscribe it and uh, thank you guys for watching the video and definitely you can find the lecture notes into the description box so click on the particular link and you will go to that pdf and you can uh, definitely download that pdf right like if you have got something from this video and again thank you for watching the video